Hope everyone's having a great start to their new year. Uh, a quick start as always. It's it's funny you go from the, the slowdown of the holidays and wrapping up the previous year to the new year and you're off to the races, you're feeling anxious, you're behind schedule, you have a million things to catch up on from being out for the holidays and it's just, uh, it gets me every year. And this year is no different. So, but this week's video is something I wanted to make. Last winter I didn't have an opportunity so I wanted to make sure I got to it this year. And mainly because I think winter, editing winter photos, it's not difficult, but it just poses some unique challenges compared to summer, spring, and fall. Mainly because snow is, is just a giant reflector. It's gonna take on the color of whatever's above it. So if there's bluebird sky, which is very common in snowy scenes, no clouds, your snow's gonna look blue. Or if it's overcast, your snow's gonna look gray and yellow and rather dull. So that always kind of poses a little bit of a challenge because you have to correct that in post in Lightroom. And the other thing is, you know, just even when you're on location, your camera's metering system always wants to underexpose snow. So whatever your camera is indicating as proper exposure, you almost always have to bump it up a stop or two to kind of correct for that. Just because it, it always thinks snow is brighter than it really is. But um, I digress, that's not the purpose of this week's video. The purpose is to dive into seven tips for editing uh, winter landscape photos in Lightroom. And I, I just wanna dive right into it. So this is a, a, a photo from, from last winter, but my very first tip here, it actually doesn't even have anything to do with the photo itself. And it makes a huge difference and it takes just two seconds to do. And what it is, is changing the border around your photo. If you just right click it and just change it to white, that's going to give you a fantastic to palette, a fantastic palette to work on. And it's also going to give you a great reference point of what true white really is. And uh, I forgot where I heard that tip. It was quite a few years ago, but man, did it make a difference in my editing workflow for, for winter photos. So that is definitely my number one tip right there is to change that canvas to white and it'll make an instant difference and uh, it, it, it works wonders for me. Now the, the second tip is white balance. Now this is one of the things that I, that I see people get tripped up on the most, mainly because a lot of times you would just grab your eyedropper tool and you know we're, we're conditioned to drop that eyedropper tool on a neutral color, usually white, to let Lightroom automatically adjust the white balance. So if we do that here, it instantly made the scene way too warm. And 99 times out of 100, that is probably what's gonna happen. It almost always makes a snowy scene just way too warm. So let me reset this. And the other option a lot of people do, and I used to do it too, is just to drop this down and hit auto. Lightroom usually does a pretty good job in this type of a scenario of just hitting auto, but if it's a snowy scene like this, you can see that it, once again, it made it very warm. Not quite as warm, I don't think, as the eyedropper solution, but nevertheless, it, it's warm. It's too warm for my taste. And what I found was whatever auto is indicating, just cut those values in half, and that's usually a pretty good place to start. So if we take this plus 33 and let's drop it down to maybe like 17 looks good. We'll take this plus 10 and we'll bring it down to plus five. Maybe bump that up just a touch more. I think that looks good for a starting point. Let's just see where we were. Yeah, big difference. So yeah, so just cut the, the auto values in half. And then, like I said, that's gonna be a good, just kind of foundation to start. You'll probably come back later on and make some minor adjustments, but that's just a good place to start. The, uh, now my third tip is just the, is always to make sure that you, and you do this with really any photo, but I think with, um, with snowy scenes, it's a little tricky, but it's just your exposure. So if we hold on the shift key and double click exposure, Lightroom is actually saying to dial in almost half a stop of negative exposure for this scene. And obviously that's not what we want to do. We want to brighten up this scene. And that just kind of ties into the fact that just snow just wreaks havoc on, you know, your camera's metering system and even Lightroom, it just always thinks snow is brighter than it really is. So what I like to do is hold down the option key and we're just gonna drag the exposure slider over until you can start to see some of these pixels bleed through because that means where you are overcooking it or blowing it, blowing out areas of their image. That looks good there. Now, of course, I would never leave it like this. I just wanted to see exactly how far I could actually push this and I could push it almost a little over one and a half stops. So. I'm just gonna bring it back now to probably like around maybe 
40 looks good, plus 40. Let me look at the before and after. Yeah, all right, we're getting, we're getting somewhere. So that's the third tip is just uh, is, is uh, adjusting the exposure. Like I said, I always hold down the option key and just kind of slide it over to see exactly how far you can push it and just kind of bring it back a little bit. Now, my fourth tip, is um, your white points and your black points. Now, you always update these in, in any photo, but I think that in a, a winter scene where it usually lacks a lot of color, the white and, and black points, I usually adjust them a little bit different. And I think it's a very common practice to try and get the deepest black in an image before you you know you crush your shadows or the and the whitest whites before you blow out your highlights to get that true true black and true white in, in an image. But in snowy scenes, I usually don't edit quite the same way as I do other images. So what I'll do is uh, I'll hold down the option key and we'll drag the whites over to the left and to the right. And what you're looking to do is find out exactly where you see the, the pixels start to come through because that means you're blowing out scenes of the, or areas of the image. It looks like right around there. So plus 17 on the whites. Now the blacks, normally most people would just hold down the option key and you just kind of pull it over until you see it come through. And there you go. But I usually like to go the other direction, and I'll definitely do that on this scene. And uh, I would say maybe right around there on the blacks. That looks good. And this is, and if you hold on the shift key and double click black, Lightroom is actually indicating that you should bring down the blacks to negative 47. But that's not quite the look I'm going for. I'm going to go kind of plus 24. Four, I think. And the reason I do that, I, I like to make the uh, snowy scenes look a little bit more ethereal, a little softer, and I think that bringing up the blacks kind of adds to that effect. And of course, we'll just uh, update the uh, the highlights and the shadows. I like to bring down the highlights a lot here, mainly because that's going to bring out the detail in the snow. So if you pull your highlights all the way up, you lose detail. But if you bring them down, that'll usually kind of bring a lot of that detail back in and texture in the snow. And then uh, we'll bring up the sh shadows as well, maybe to around there. And let's toggle this on and off. So it's definitely getting to a, a more usable photo at this point. So I, I'm starting to like the way it looks. And this is actually something I like to do as well too. I guess this will be part of tip four, I think we're on. It's just to bring down the clarity just a touch because it's just gonna add a little bit more to that ethereal kind of soft look that uh, snow, snow is. Now, the fifth tip is has to do with uh, contrast. So what I usually do is bring down the contrast up here with the contrast slider, and then I will actually add contrast here in the tone curve. So, and a lot of times these uh, preset medium contrast and strong contrast settings work very well. Um, I usually kind of use those as starting points a lot of times and just kind of make some kind of minor tweaks from there. So maybe I'll just bring this down here just a touch in the shadow area, darker scene, and just adjust the midtones a little bit more. Let's see what that does. Okay, yeah, that added the actual contrast that we needed. Let's look at the before and after. Okay, like it, like it. It's, it is getting somewhere. It definitely looks better than the blue kind of just washed out scene that we started with. Now, my sixth tip really has to do with just, just getting creative. You know, where we're at right now is a really good point from where we began and just adding a little bit of a creative touch to the overall image. And there's a multiple different ways to do it. And one of the, my favorite ways is to actually add colors to the shadows. And there's a couple different ways to do it. A lot of times I'll do that with split toning. And if you're not familiar with split toning, I actually did a video on that, um, I think a month or two ago. And I'll, I'll link it above here if you wanna take a look at that. But we'll jump over here to split toning. And I don't do anything with the highlights because Lightroom is gonna think pretty much all of the snow is a highlight. So whatever color you would pick for the highlights, it's gonna add it to the snow and I don't wanna do that. I usually add it only to the shadows. And I think the colors that work best is um, maybe blue, a green, or a yellow, a warm tone. Usually works good in the shadows. So let's just pull up the color picker, add some saturation, saturation to it just so we can see what we're working with. And just kind of slide it over. Something 
maybe right around there looks good kind of like a an aqua green color a little bit just to kind of give it that cinematic look let's just toggle this on and off and just see what that does so yeah that it added a, a subtle difference to turn off on subtle difference, but it did it did kind of create that that cinematic look a little bit, which I usually like with a lot of my photos. Or you can also go down to the uh, the camera calibration, and you can always tint the shadows this way. You can slide the uh, the shadow tint all the way to the greens, or pull it all the way up to the uh, the magentas. It's usually a very subtle uh, change, uh, at least in this image it is. But and something else I like to do is play with these uh, primary colors here, so you can kind of just boost up the saturation, so you can see what you're doing and just kind of move them over to the left and the right and just kind of see what that actually does. Like you can really see it's affecting the, uh, the setting sun in the background a little bit, which I kind of like that actually. I'm just going to pull the saturation back and let's just see what we did. A subtle difference, but it definitely kind of make the, made the, uh, the uh, I, actually, I'm sorry, I call this the setting sun. This is a rising sun here. Uh, it just kind of added a little bit of glow to that. So I'm going to leave that there. But you can do the same thing with the green primary and the blue primary and um, just kind of see what, what you like. So it's just a great way to get a little bit creative. Now, as far as uh, the, the the colors, you know, whenever I think of creativity, it's always has to do with the, uh, the, the, the colors of the actual image. And it's no surprise, you know, diving into the HSL panel is definitely a great place to start. And as you can see in this photo, there's still a little bit of that blue tone to it. And I want to remove that. And really the, one of the easiest ways to, to do that is just, you know, you could bring down the saturation of the blue there. That'll definitely help it some. You could bring up the blue luminance. That's going to help it as well. So any kind of combination of those is fine. Uh, you could actually also, going back to the camera calibration section, you can bring the blue primary saturation down to uh, like a negative value, and that's also going to take out any kind of blue as well. So there's there's really multiple different ways to remove that that, that blue kind of color cast across the entire scene. But uh, and the final tip, and it's probably the easiest tip out of all of them, and it's just to get up and walk away. And then, and, and I recommend this on all photos and, it, and I actually, I will never post a photo or even consider an image complete until I walk away for at least a night. It doesn't have to be a full night. You can just walk away for an hour. But after you edit photos, especially white photos, your eyes become very adjusted to it and you, and you have a, a very difficult time noticing what you're doing, noticing the changes that you're making. So you just have to walk away and I guarantee you more than likely when you come back, whether it's an hour later or a day later, you'll look at it and you'll want to make a couple more additional changes that you didn't even notice the day before. So just taking a little bit of time and walking away from your edit and revisiting at a later point is definitely a powerful, um, uh, t powerful option and it's time well spent for sure. So if we just look where we started, that, that's where we started. I mean, it's it's pretty amazing how the, just the overall difference of this. And this is exactly, I mean, this isn't the final image of how I ended up, but it's it's pretty close to what I ended up with. But you can just really see how we just went from that very blue color cast and added contrast in certain areas using the curves to where we're at today. And it just looks, it looks a lot better. So uh, I hope you didn't know all of those tips. I hope you were able to get at least uh, one good tip out of that. If uh, if you have any questions, as always, just leave me a, a comment below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And uh, if you're not subscribed, if you could subscribe to my channel, lets me know that uh, the content I'm creating is uh, useful and uh, it's definitely um, appreciated. So um, I think that's it. Also, of course, if you enjoyed the video, if you could give it a thumbs up and I appreciate you watching and I'll see you all next week. Bye.